Welcome everyone, Dr. Thor here. Get ready for Gnosis. Well, I want to talk about the bigger picture. Now, society never wants to deal with the bigger picture. And it's always a problem here. Should I come out and talk about what, quote, is politics? Politics? It's not really politics. We're talking about what's happening in the world. And these things are uh, frightening on all sorts of levels. And when you think that society is stable for a little bit, you get hit with something that completely changes your reality. And how do you adjust to that? Well, if you don't know how what's going on in your world and what you have to be careful of, uh, then how can you possibly succeed? Now, uh, the bottom line is, is not to get involved in the minutia. This is where I talk people... Um, about all the time. Well, you don't want to get involved in society, necessarily get involved in day-to-day -day politics and all the things that go with that. That's a tie-in. You don't want to get involved with it because you become enslaved with their belief systems and get become part of the system, which is not going to be good. They're going to use you. You're not going to use them. But do you need to know what's going on? Uh, it's like saying, well, I'm going to ignore the weather. And if you have to travel every day, go to work or wherever, and you got to drive a car or something, shouldn't you know if it's icy roads? Shouldn't you know if it's pouring? Well, I just go. Don't you want to know what clothes to wear? Do you need a hat, an umbrella, a coat? Well, this is the kind of things that you have to be in touch with because this affects you directly. So, uh, all of these things is how in depth do you get in it? Well, uh, if society wanted to handle problems, they would deal with the bigger picture, and they never do. And life is always the bigger picture, but it doesn't serve the purpose of those people stirring up trouble to take care of the bigger picture. And the bigger picture solves problems. Do you want to run into this same problem uh, again? Well, it's a waste of time. Let's move on. Let's take care of it. Let's look at the bigger picture so this doesn't happen again. Now, the bottom line is that uh, we can take this with the recent um, presidential elections in the United States. Now, people think a whole bunch of different things have happened. This is no different whatsoever. It's just that you got one party screaming uh, because they're a bunch of bad losers. They're not screaming, let's fix the voting machines, let's do things better, let's get rid of paper ballots, let's make sure the individual uh, can vote easily. They don't want any of that because it means they can't rig the election. So the bigger picture here technically is not what fraud there was or not fraud. There's always voting fraud and uh, uh, ironically it's the Republicans who've benefited from one election after another because because of their fraud directly and indirectly, which has been proven first with George Bush and the stealing of Florida from Gore, and then of course um, the additional uh, uh, popular vote that Hillary Clinton won, which were several million, I believe, or whatever it was, she got more popular votes than Donald Trump did. So, uh, so again, the election was stolen. They don't care. No, it wasn't. It was all based on electoral vote. Yeah, well, the electoral vote is a con, which no longer is needed. It should be something that one vote, one person, and this would make voting more important because your vote would be important. Uh, because it could come down to um, a certain percentage of people and you're going to make the difference. So it does the opposite of what people say the electoral college were supposed to do, making things even. Well, I don't think it makes things even at all. It makes it the opposite. It makes people not want to vote there. Now, if your vote really counts and um, there is a close election, which they're all close, by the way. You know, people talk about, oh, these, well, they're, they're not. I don't know an election. There's very few elections uh, that I can remember that were runaways. So, there's always the key states. You got to win this. You got to win that. And it's always been basically, and it seems to be uh, interestingly enough, around the world, there's always a 50 50 split, even in the most absurd countries as Finland, where the, the, the candidates only win by 2 or 3%. And this seems to be around the world that everybody is split 50 50, which I find very suspicious to begin with. But how do you solve these problems again? We have important business to do. Uh, whether you believe in the pandemic or not, 
we need to take care of things. We have other things going on in life in general. We shouldn't be spending months on wasted energy, appointing people, spending billions of dollars to look into election details. Um, this should never be the case. It's a waste of money. And that includes all the states and everything else that had to put on extra personnel, had to recount things, had to look at stuff. Do you think this happens for free? People are just donating their time. Well, they're not. People have to be paid for all this. It's also work that if it's done right the first time, means people can get back and do important political business in their cities and towns instead of worrying about a vote. So, um, but that's the bigger picture. The bigger picture is fix it so that in the future, none of this happens again so we don't have to waste time and money. Now, this sounds logical, doesn't it? It sounds logical if you're a good, honest person who wants the basic, uh, ultimately, wants the public opinion to rule. Now, the bottom line is that a lot of people don't want that. They don't think people are smart about it. There is no replacement for that. When we start rigging it to your own personal belief systems, well, then we no longer have a vote. I think in a lot of things, <clears throat> with the buffer of government and the Constitution, that when it comes to national issues, uh, particularly uh, the presidency, that uh, everybody should feel comfortable with whomever the president is because they voted for him. But if we're going to always have 50-50 splits here, and basically that's what it comes down to, you know, 49-51, um, you're going to have half the population upset. Meaning that if you walk down the street, every other person that you look at hates what's going on. Is that good for the country? Well, that's a problem as well, but that's a bigger issue as well. But the bottom line is, is that there should never be any kind of conflict. There should be a federal law with federal money that watches all elections, plain and simple, to make sure that they are honest. This gets back to this whole stopping of corruption. What's the bigger issue? What's happening with voting? Well, it gets back to corruption again. Why does anything not work? You know how many hundreds of billions of dollars are lost every year from medical fraud? The money that everybody says they can't have, that people can't get even the proper medical care they need so that they can go to work and make a living and take care of their families? Billions are lost to medical fraud all the time. So what is happening here with all of these types of things? So if we end fraud, we end all this. There's plenty of money out there. I, I would assume there are hundreds of billions of dollars lost every year just from fraud, fraudulent government contracts. And it goes on and on. A lot of people have been given all sorts of contracts with this COVID area and have made a fortune. Um, the people at the top of the business industries are now twice as wealthy as they were before because the shift of wealth has been extraordinary so these are all the things that make you wonder about uh, this going around and of course there's going to be trillions made more with vaccinations and follow-ups and all that so money is being like government does they just take bags of money and give it to certain people when there's a crisis trying to take care of it well that doesn't work very well because all that does is uh, keep corruption going but as an individual, you need to know this. You need to know what's going on. Is there any validity? And we've got a situation right now that brings this into um, very blatant um, reality. Is there anything real going on here with this whole covert thing? Is this a giant fraud? Now, the problem is, is that all the things that are being done, including hospitals set up, doctors talking, well, I know this from my personal life that all these people are owned by the government. You do what they tell you to do. They give you scripts. They even send these people to schools to train them on how to do this. So I know that may be shocking to a lot of people, and it was shocking. Oh, well, you, how could that possibly be? They have unlimited money. They don't care. The money is there. Simple as that. And they pay these people off all the time. And, of course, they're threatened as well. So are the hospitals full? Well, the hospitals are empty in a lot of areas except the covert war because nobody's going to the hospital. So there's less medical use. Well, why all those doctors that don't have jobs now because of their plastic surgeons or other things that people aren't doing right at this time, why they're not moved over to this other area, we don't know. Are there this? We're getting staggering amounts of deaths. And this is just not in one country. This is all over the world. Well, all the world is all on the same corruption game. Does everybody understand that? 
So, um, and you don't because you don't think anything at this level. I would have never believed this 10 years ago until it personally happened to me. And I've seen the level of corruption that's out there. So do, do we need to know about this? Do you want to risk your life that this is some sort of, quote, conspiracy only? Well, I don't know about that. It seems to be a very aggressive type of flu that people easily get. Is that true? Are the hospitals overloaded? Are there tents full of people? Well, you know, I've never seen people go to these, you know, they set up different triages in different places, but I never see the triages of pictures of them full of people. Uh, so a lot of people think that this is all a fraud. Well, you're putting your life on the line. You're putting your family's life on the line. Um, is this something you want to do based on the fact of somebody's opinion? And you got to remember there are people paid on both sides of this. People will go out and make statements because they think it is a conspiracy. Uh, they'll talk to reporters saying they said this and heard that and they'll put up little bits of film. Well, this doesn't prove anything. That they somebody told them this, they saw a cart full of ballots coming in. What does that mean? So, um, it means nothing. That person's not an... Oh, the guy inside told me. Uh, you get all sorts of information like this. And what validity does it have? Well, it is interesting. Maybe it's a reason to start some investigations, but it is far from c conclusive in any way. So evidence is not necessarily proof. So uh, something people should carefully think about it. So uh, we need to look at all these things to do it. And how much as a manifesting scientist, an occult scientist, uh, do you get involved in all these things? Well, while you want to stay on the peripheries of all of the uh, minutia of things, uh, the bigger picture is important. We should have systems that work. We are interdependent. Medications, supplies, critical things come from China all around the world. If there's a problem with China, we don't get no products. 90% of the ingredients in the medications uh, that people take, if you consider those important, and they could be, uh, again, maybe, uh, maybe they're not that important, but who knows? We have to look into what you can't get them if there's a problem with China. China owns most of the world now. Everybody else is their indirect slave, particularly weak need countries like the United States who have so much buying power, but make sure they buy everything overseas and sell very little, even though we have a lot to sell, even if it's just agricultural. Um, so, um, very few of this actually uh, starts to happen. So, what is the bigger picture? And you always have to look at that. So, uh, if you get caught into who's right, I'm a Trump supporter and I think you're... That's not the point here. Even if it is true, which I frankly doubt, but... I'm not a supporter of either. They're both weak need. Uh, Trump, uh, from what's come out about him, is a horribly corrupt person who has no business being in there. Yet some of his policies, at least what he talks about, are good. We shouldn't have unlimited immigration. We should be working more like businessmen out there instead of politicians when it comes with foreign trade. We shouldn't allow Europeans and others to slap us in the face, not take our goods, which is what happens all the time. We pay the bill for the rest of the world, so, uh, particularly militarily, and they're more than happy to let us do that. So these are the type of things that need to change. But that's another bigger picture issue because the political parties have to define this properly so it's done. A president can do a lot to a degree, but these things can all be reversed easily. There should be a policy, a trade policy, and these things corrected. It shouldn't be dependent on one person. So the bigger picture is the parties need to have their policies, which they write out, uh, to include these things not dependent on one man. So, but the bottom line here is it doesn't matter who or what. If there's a feeling, and there seems to be a great feeling that there's fraud, well, I don't, nobody's talking about fixing the election process. Well, we don't want this. We don't want that. We want to keep these people. But that's what they're saying. 
what came out is they didn't want to count the uh, paper ballots, which uh, the, the Trump made sure he screwed up the post office to make them as late as possible to get there so they wouldn't count because the actual Democrats told everybody, don't go out and vote. It's too dangerous with the uh, disease factors. Send your ballot in, which I have done for over 30 years, regardless of the conditions being good or bad. Um, so the whole idea was to slow those down because they knew statistically that they didn't have a chance to win as almost all Republicans do. But you get out the Republicans have people who tend to be a little more dedicated. They're going to get out to the polls. And of course, there's amazing how there's so many diff different viewpoints uh, to this. So the whole idea was to get a whole bunch of votes, which did happen, that were in whatever these machines stated, uh, so that it looked like... Uh, it was a runaway win while none of the uh, while the majority of the votes hundreds of thousands of votes uh, were being sent in from everybody from the military to overseas etc and this is how things are done and have always been done should they be done that way no we should be looking at election reform so it's the bigger picture it's also the bigger picture in general. It's not whether it's a specific item that is being uh, made in China and they exclusively have it and it's full of toxins, which China is known for. Um, should we be making so many strategically important items uh, and buying them from anywhere overseas? So uh, all of this uh, needs to be stopped and there needs to be a lot more of uh, industrial power within the United States, which uh, of course was promised that didn't happen. Well, that's the bigger picture. The bigger picture is not China as the bad guy only. Um, the bigger picture is that the entire world is screwing everybody by not allowing their goods in there, particularly the United States, and taxing the hell out of them, even though, particularly in Europe, the dollar is 20% less than the euro. That's a huge amount of money. So for every $100 that you want to spend, it's only worth 80 Yet, you would think that they were the idea of doing this as a country in particular, like the United States, is that, well, American goods are cheaper. You should see them everywhere. Not only American goods not cheaper in Europe, they've went up in price. Well, why is that? Well, they went up in price because they understand that America is weaker. So American goods have went up about 20 to 40 percent when the dollar has went down that amount. So it makes absolutely no sense because you're buying it wholesale to begin with. Then you're getting 20% on it. So you're getting a huge discount on American goods, but you will find none of those in Europe whatsoever, particularly so-called allies or even people that are close. Uh, you may see a bit more in Britain because there's so many American businesses, but in places outside of Britain, and even there you're not seeing that much, you're not seeing American goods, period. So... This is pretty sad. You're certainly not seeing them at what they should be, which is very discounted prices, because they tax the hell out of them. So if the goods of America, they've put more taxes on American goods. Uh, so even though you're getting goods at much cheaper, when they come to the country, they're taxed even more. So that isn't happening with other people, but that's the game the world plays because America is a sucker and everything comes from America. Jeans, running shoes, t-shirts, you name it, it all comes from America. The original designs come from America. And America does nothing to do it. America doesn't care about each other. I mean, you have this kind of thing right now. There isn't a united America with a uh, everybody praising the American system. There's a bunch of people who want to break away from each other now. How does that help us with the rest of the world? That's not going to help you. That's not going to bring industry. That's not going to bring higher wages better jobs and take care of things if every one state is fighting the other state or one person this is counterproductive to the highest level we have huge social and international problems that aren't that's the bigger picture and everybody's got the minutiae going on and this is what they want they want people fighting at these tiny little uh, levels and not looking at the bigger picture but the bigger picture goes with everything. What in life are you having problems with uh, where you're using the manifesting sciences for? Well, you should be looking at the bigger picture there. 
you know, we're trying to empower people on different levels. Well, why aren't you doing better even when you have tools and other things if you're not? Most people are, of course. You get a significant edge with all IGOS products. And if you apply them consistently, your life changes dramatically for the better. But what are you doing to break away from that? Do you understand how all this stuff works? And what's the bigger picture of it all? Should you, um, you know, if you're trying to empower yourself in a, uh, with little channels, as I always speak about for manifesting, well, you got a problem there. You can't try and empower yourself if you don't have channels. So if you're trying to bring whatever that may be in your life, most of the time it's finances, well, what are the channels you've opened up so that you can allow these things to come to you. So you get all these great products, you're doing using all these great machines and all these uh, uh, amulets and everything else. Well, where is the money going to come to you from that? So, you know, it really gets down. It's unfortunate. The bigger picture comes to the fact, well, you know, I'm not going to make more money at my job. and I that's not, So we're going to try and win at gambling. So the whole idea is trying to win the lottery and trying to win at gambling is one of the most difficult ways of doing things instead of trying to empower maybe a little business you start on the side um, or some other channels. So, you know, the bigger picture is to kind of look at, well, how are things going to come to you? Thinking that you're just going to win the lottery and um, be more successful at gambling. Well, these things generally happen as well, but, you know, they tend not to be what you think they are, meaning you win the big prize. Um, uh, people do win more often when they do this and they start making a few thousand, but that's not what people are looking for. They're looking for financial independence. Now, how does this happen? So it happens by the fact that um, this is um, something that is critically important to understand that you have to look at the bigger picture. You have to, how do you change things? So it's the same thing there. So you don't repeat this again. What do you need to do? Um, and it is complicated in life. Some things are a lot easier, especially such as election reform. Election reform wouldn't be difficult um, to do. Uh, having uh, we're buying machines from China we don't need to buy machines from China we need to set up voting online and people have a one-time use code to vote plain and simple now oh that like that whole oh, fraud people are gonna break in and hack it they're already doing that uh, some people claim they already claim there's huge voter flaws even with uh, bringing in hundreds of thousands of paper ballots which would be the most difficult way to rig an election um, so uh, all of this stuff uh, doesn't make any sense whatsoever. So the whole idea is do it in a proper fashion. Yeah, take all that money that is spent uh, in all these election areas and put it into cybersecurity and putting together a proper watched regulated team where we do it. We do our most important businesses online now simply using little codes or even most people are even doing it with their phones where your um, people, uh, your money is controlled that way. So all you have to do is plain and simple is make this proper and then everyone does. And it should be very traceable because everything you do online is traceable. So no matter where you go, what you do, how long you're online, that's all recorded. It's a giant little meter going on your line and they know exactly what you've done. So, uh, so these things are kind of easy to fix, especially when you have uh, resources to do it with. We don't need Chinese machines. Why are voting machines, which are um, part of our national security, uh, being made overseas? This doesn't make any sense whatsoever. And quite frankly, Chinese products, like so many other things, are not that much cheaper than something that is made here. And they are cheaper because they use slave labor and they don't give people benefits or anything else. So basically, it's just shifting uh, slavery, uh, cotton picking, over to actual China where they use their slaves to make things so you can have them cheaper. And it ends up that they're not cheaper. The, the small discounts are just that you're not getting. So again, people are making huge profits uh, and you think it's cheaper. And the stuff you get from China that is cheaper is such crap that it is, you're going to throw it away anyway. And of course, that's what uh, it's, things are designed for. China's not going to keep going because you buy a plastic bowl uh, once every 10 years. It's going to have to get, probably you're going to have to buy one once every six months, if not sooner. The whole idea is these things are not made to last. They're made to buy, buy, buy.
So all of this is a fantasy. And again, that's the bigger picture. Um, the bigger picture is what solves the problem and makes it so it doesn't have to happen again and you don't waste time and money on it. So you need to do that in your entire life as well. So looking at the bigger picture and is important. Uh, the fact is, is I don't see how we could possibly not cover some political issues. I don't really, as I said, support anybody. I support Gnosis. What is the truth? What works? And the problem is, is that you've got political parties that are all corrupt. They're not helping anybody. The people involved in these campaigns are the same old people who have been doing things. Yeah, they state a lot, but nothing really happens. Uh, what happens is the status quo is really what happens. Um, with uh, the nastier types seeming to push their bills through easier, while the other people say, oh yeah, we wanted to help people, but they won't let us do it. Well, why not? They get their stuff through. How come you can't get your, oh, 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 yeah, we all know again. It's the same old story. There's a lot of talk, and it sounds real good, but when it really comes down to it, nothing really changes. So you want to make sure that doesn't happen in your life as well. But looking at the bigger picture, what's going on, what's going on with COVID and all these other things is um, something that you have to pay attention to. You have to be aware of what's going on in your world uh, because this can directly affect you, whether it's a road closure, um, some other problems coming, a tornado heading your way, lack of water, depending on where you live. We just don't know of any of this stuff. And this means that we have to watch all this stuff on a basic survival level and there's other things do you really want to get involved with and um, is this something that uh, should not be discussed should you get vaccinations that are unproven or quite frankly are new vaccinations they're not even your traditional type uh, is this such a serious situation that you need that does vaccination do anything well these are issues that should be thought about and covered and um, the bigger picture should be looked at here and of course in the end you have to modify this like with everything you take in to fit into your own personal life um, they're already telling people not to get the shots if you're sensitive. People that have asthma, that have allergies, um, that are easily have reactions to things. Don't get it because a lot of people are uh, getting severe reactions, so it appears. There's been a, uh, a number of deaths linked to the vaccination already. Now, these are small considering the amount of it, but it's big if it's you that die. So all of this, we don't know. Can we trust any of it? The people, when we look at uh, the politicians who went in for covert, uh, are getting treatments that you can't get as an individual. So what does that mean? They're getting specialized treatments because they're big shots. How insulting is that? So what does all that mean? Well, it means that we can't trust anything. You want to put something in your body? Does vaccinations in general have uh, any kind of validity? Well, they know they don't have validity, which is why it's a new type of vaccination. And it has to be kept below zero uh, to keep it active for some reason. You wonder how they could even test this working uh, with something that is that uh, difficult to handle. Um, so we go on and on with these things. but. Uh, the statistical data is is that vaccinations don't work well and they're full of toxins and other things we have no idea and as i said this is uh, i haven't looked into it quite yet but this is a new type of vaccination you're not getting live bacteria uh, put in you it's some other process well that scares me as well because it's new and new means bad so um and if people are already getting bad reactions to it well you could be the same thing happen to you easily and maybe it's not so uh, blunt but it's getting into your system and messing it up so is it untried thing so important to get at this particular point is it going to do anything uh, well uh, personally and all I can speak to is personally this is not something that I would ever get I don't trust any of it there's no statistical data this is a placebo effect for the masses that makes people very wealthy it's also another way to control people there's talk in uh, Australia that unless you have proof of vaccination they won't let you in the country 
Now, this also could be a way of getting all sorts of nasty things in your body, including mind control substances as well, which is well known. So the whole idea is what is this? Let's put something in you so that they can use psychotronic type weapons to influence you further. Um, all of these things. I mean, they've already controlled the entire country, or I should say the entire world, uh, by telling people to stay home, etc. So these are important issues that we have to cover. It also says the fact that, you know, if there is something going on, well, you should be using your technologies to counter it, particularly if you have any of our systems. So you should be sending yourself, uh, people who have the Triforce systems right now, particularly the new amplified ones, you should be sending yourself um, actual um, uh, empowered energies to counter these viruses. And we uh, do have this made up in a uh, form. I don't know <coughs> if people can get it, but you can copy it right off of the amulet page. It's not as strong as the amulet itself, but that image can be uh, copied and downloaded and placed in your boxes on a radionic machine, etc. If you have a radionic machine, you should be countering this so-called virus there by sending energies that will counter that. Now, that's all in this uh, new um, uh, sigil that we have up there and amulet, <clears throat> which we highly recommend. Of course, people should have this. It's an antiviral, anti-COVID um, uh, or in that area, energetic informational field. So you want to get the edge. Is this real? Is it not? <clears throat> well, something's happening, so we can tell. But, you know, it's interesting. Uh, you know, they rarely show bodies or anything else um, because of so-called taste. But is these happening? There should be a, a real serious problem with uh, the amount of bodies they have. Where are they going? Are they stacked up? Are they in refrigerated cars? What's happening? Uh, where are these things going to? So, uh, you don't see any of this. You have to wonder if that you don't, does it mean that it's not happening? Um, so we don't know. Uh, there's been a huge, the largest shift of wealth in the history of this planet has happened because of this. We think of it as being all negative and a lot of businesses have been crushed. Other people have went up in unbelievable amounts of, because uh, all the businesses are cut down. Who's been hurt? Well, who's been hurt is a lot of service industry and of course the travel industries um so all of these things have taken a fantastic hit while the money still has went to other people so all of this is something that we have to keep in mind uh, when we look at this and of course it's ignorant to think that everything is just some sort of conspiracy maybe this is real do you want to put your life and your family's life on the line by acting cavalier to it um the issue of masks and everything come up. Now, masks aren't necessarily to protect you uh, from what's floating in the air. They're there for people who cough on you, who, uh, who have the uh, actual illness, whatever that may be. And this is not a new technology, by the way. I mean, the Asians have been wearing masks for hundreds of years. If you're sick or don't feel good in Asia, you wear a mask. Why is that? Well, it's been proven that if you're coughing or you're breathing out where you have some bacteria coming out your nose and mouth, uh, which seem to be some of the places it's more prevalent, uh, you're not pushing that on somebody else. So if you stand next to somebody or in back of a line or whatever it is, you're not giving them your pure toxins. So it is catching a certain amount of that in the mask and keeping it in your biological environment. People think it's preventing. I think that's an ignorant way to look at it. So if somebody has something, it stops them from spreading it to you, not the, uh, by keeping it more condensed. And it does make sense. People have used these masks for a long period of time. So there is some validity, depending on what the situation is and to what degree we don't know, to wearing a mask. And the fact is, if you're sick, it, you tend to make it more difficult to give it to other people. It's as simple as that. It has nothing to do with the um, fact that it's somehow preventing uh, you by filtering stuff. Now, there's a certain amount of filtering you get there from a mask. But the whole idea is it means that if uh, you're not getting the huge shot of potential toxins and disease uh, from others who have some condition. And, of course, that's how it's used, in, as I said, in Asia, and it's nothing overly new. Now, we need to look into these technologies to find if they're any good. And, of course, they're pretty primitive. 
uh, there's got to be better masks that people can have uh, that work better uh, than these basically uh, multi-filters, which are difficult even to breathe in. There are better masks, but uh, this is another thing uh, that we um, have a problem with. So everything has to be looked at, and as an organization, uh, we should keep people informed as we can. But the point is, is that how... Uh, information, as I've said for many years, people who follow uh, what I've been stating, it changes all the time. It's it's right for now. And that's unfortunately all we can say. New information comes all the time. New things get proven. New sources come out. So you have to stay on top of things to figure out what the real truth is. What is the real truth of everything? And unfortunately, that changes. Uh, I've changed my opinions on many things. Uh, you get caught up in the um, basically the propaganda, what's going on around you, what you see on TV and YouTube. But does anybody have the right story? I've seen so many things up there that obviously are plants. These are paid people, and this happens all the time. And when you have a, uh, a media that uh, has all these implants that is controlled, what do you believe? And this is difficult, but... You have to look for the bigger picture. What is going on? And whether people like it or not, I mean, most places are locked down. Most places you can't go out there. Uh, so it really doesn't matter whether you believe what's going on or not. You have to follow those basic social rules. And uh, because it's disease and not a political thing, you are shunned if you say, well, I don't believe this. Well, you're risking other people's lives is how people look at it. And you're going to get no support. So you're going to have to deal with what happens anyway. And should you give consideration that this could be real? Well, you should. We don't know. And to just go out into a um, uh, into a dangerous situation with your head tucked between your legs thinking this is just a giant fraud, which it certainly could be, uh, is kind of irresponsible. I don't think that's the way you approach anything properly. Uh, you should test the waters. How is it? What's going on? What are you finding out from friends and relatives? What can you gleam of value? Meaning, are you finding any gnosis out there? Are you finding any truth about this? Um, Maybe if you have time off and can do it, well, are you wandering over to where these places are? These set up triages, are there people there? I don't know how far you can get into hospitals and other things, but is there a lot going on there? Well, hospitals are pretty dead. <laughs> uh, so, um, you know, disregard the pun there. But the point is, is that, uh, I mean, People aren't going into hospitals for a bunch of other things. So there's only certain areas uh, that people are going into. And where are they? So, uh, so how do you know what's going on and not going on? It's very hard to figure this out because uh, the news can be 100% controlled. And again, what is the bigger picture? I mean, what is this? When you really get down to all the stuff I've just talked about, which is, by the way, minutia meaning the fact that you're getting caught into the details of it. And the devil's in the details, meaning the fact that uh, while they got you spinning around, oh, whoa, look at this, this person's dying, that's what's the bigger picture? What's the bigger issue here? Failed medical science. Here we go again. What's wrong with the elections? We don't have proper election machines. We're not doing the process now in a world that is completely different than it was even 15 or 20 years ago. We're doing things all wrong. That's the bigger picture. We can do things easy that are protected, that we get instantaneous results by doing things, quote, online. We do everything else online. These can be protected. But what is the problem here? What is the problem that I've been talking about for many, many years? Failed medical technology. We have technologies for nothing. To think that we can get a vaccine that's going to protect us when we can't get things to cure the vaccine, the problem. You know, if we can't cure this with some sort of medicines, how can we come up with a backdoor solution of curing it with uh, making your body do it because you're triggering this area? That's pretty elaborate. Um, uh, medical technologies, which we just don't have. We don't have elaborate medical technologies. We've cured absolutely nothing out there. The last breakthrough we had were antibiotics. 
And that was in the late 40s when the first penicillin came out and then uh, another 10 years of other types of antibiotics. That's it. Nothing else has come out that has done much of anything. Uh, there are certain medications and certain fields that have helped people somewhat. And there's a lot of classic medications that have been used for 100 years uh, that everybody uses, from heart pills to asthma inhalers. It's all the same stuff. There's nothing new in there. So, But these aren't cures anyway. <clears throat> and technically, antibiotics aren't cures either. They tend to suppress something, uh, hide it in a little box where it comes out somewhere later. So the science is that. So we don't know how to cure anything, but we're going to come up with vaccinations. But what's the bigger picture? The bigger picture is we have no medical technologies. Because let's go over the cures. And, you know, I've said this before, but I think it really illustrates the problem we have. Uh, dandruff is a bacteria. We haven't cured it. There's over-the-counter crap you use day in, day out, which is probably no good for you, uh, to put on there, particularly uh, head and shoulders. Well, that's zinc in there. So, and you're taking a lot of zinc in your body if you use that every time. Let's get to another thing. I don't know if it's an illness, but, you know, I just noted recently, and it's kind of bothers me because I don't like the look. Baldness. Everybody's shaving their head now. Everybody looks like a fucking gray alien now, which is interesting. Um, which people have said you'll evolve to it. And people are looking more and more like that. I wonder if there's that more and more hybrid effect because I'm seeing it everywhere. Even people's um, hairline is now starting in the middle of the top of their head. Uh, and this is not, not baldness. This is where their hairline, particularly people apparently from Eastern Europe. And this is not males. This is females as well. Interesting. But let's get back to baldness. Uh, I don't think baldness looks good on anybody. After uh, Telly Savalas, I pretty much had it. Uh, uh, it was cute for a little while, but now I think it just looks horrible. Uh, so the point is, is that uh, baldness. Well, I can't figure out how to grow hair. But we figured out how to make a vaccine for a terrible toxin. Okay, okay. <laughs> Anything to say, man. Anything to say. Um, and let's go to other things. Uh, we can go through the most minor of things, acne. Can't cure acne. Um, still to this day, billions are spent on acne medications, acne treatments. None of it's being handled. A lot of people have terrible skin. What is this? What's going on? So we haven't healed that. We haven't killed baldness. Uh, we go on and on and on to every possible minor situation that you may have that can't be cured. And this is, doesn't matter how minor it is. You know, millions are spent on over-the-counter preparations to take care of all sorts of situations, um, which people are plagued with, uh, regardless of what those minor things are. But you're plagued with one thing after another because they haven't figured ways to cure this. So you're buying over-the-counter stuff to use constantly. Um, uh, from and this could be things like um, heartburn and other things, which basically you take aluminum. So most of these uh, anti-heartburn stuff are magnesium and aluminum together. Well, aluminum is extremely toxic. Have they looked into that problem? But here we go again. Why are we taking these things? So it goes on and on with the most simplest things in life that you think. You think you would have a dandruff cure. You think you'd be able to save your hair at the very least, but why not be able to grow it back? People are, well, we can grow back limbs and figures. You know, I hear all this from the alternative people. And, of course, it may very well be possible. But it ain't working. We've got really crappy stuff that people use, Rogaine and other things that give you minor things. Why can't you grow back a full head of hair? If we can kind of do it, why can't we do it completely? Well, medical science has failed. And you would think this is a trillion dollar industry where people could grow hair back. And of course, your body works different. You lose hair on the top of your head where it, you would think it would be important to you for sun problems. And certainly is important to you when it comes to uh, aesthetics. Generally, bald doesn't look that as good. Uh, people want lots of hair because it's more attractive. So you think that if people could figure out how to do this, you're talking about a lot of money to be made. So the bottom line is that they're not making a lot of money and they don't have anything for this, regardless of these quasi little things at work. You should be able to get a full head of hair back easily. So we get into all these things. 
acne, dandruff, hair, um, baldness problems. Well, you lose your hair on the top of your head and uh, most males then start to get lots of hair on the rest of their body. Well, something's wrong there. That's obviously a DNA problem because you don't need hair on your body. I'm not even sure what hair ever did for people unless you're uh, like an animal where it's so much on you that it keeps you protected and warm. Well, that's never really been the case of uh, primates. Um, so uh, that you had enough hair to do that. That's another thing that uh, could be discussed of how weak uh, the human species is. Um, but the bigger picture here is none of this has happened. So all of a sudden, this genius medical group is going to come out with something to help in this area. But the bigger picture is, is that we have a medical industry that does nothing to treat virals. Now, you hear this, oh, we have antivirals for AIDS. What? Well, that's right. We've had these for many years. But they claim when you go to the doctor for regular things that you have a virus. We're not going to give you antibiotics because antibiotics don't work on viruses. You're going to, um, uh, it only, you have to wait until it gets bacterial for this to help at all, which I don't agree with either. I've taken uh, antibiotics for these types of things and uh, um, they've worked great. And um, whether it's a virus or not a virus, <laughs> do they really know? Again, you know, they know so much. They just can't achieve anything. So we have a failed medical industry. We don't cure anything. Uh, there's no money in cures. There's only money in treatments. All the major diseases are increasing. Uh, people are getting sicker and sicker with about half the population who are, be, are pre-diabetic already. So why is everybody turning into diabetics? We have huge problems with kids kidneys and livers, which of course makes sense as you're going to get diabetic. A lot of people don't understand that liver uh, controls a lot of blood sugar. So if the liver is underworking or overworking, um, it's going to stress out your pancreas and you're going to have all these problems. The liver produces sugar, which is one reason you don't really have to eat any uh, carbohydrates in general. The sugar will, uh, if you need sugar, it's going to come from the liver um, as a general rule. So as I said, these are general statements. I am not a doctor. So the whole idea is that um, uh, these are the things that we have to look into. So again, bigger picture, failed medical industry, failed um, anti-corruption in general. And certainly we have failed to put together after all these years, and this must be around the world. A lot of people like to laugh in America, but the kind of voter fraud that goes on in the rest of the world is this is probably even worse. What kind of voting machines are they using? And why isn't there talks of how to vote and uh, voting reform? As I've mentioned, they don't want voting reform. They want to rig the election so their party wins, particularly parties that are under stress, uh, which is uh, the uh, a lot of the conservative groups, because a lot of, uh, particularly in America, as the Latin population grows, which tends to be mostly um, democratic, the uh, Republicans don't have a chance anywhere. So uh, it's amazing they have as many votes as they have right now. So, uh, but the point is, is the bigger picture is supposed to be, and if you nailed these people down, you could get them in a corner that they'd probably say, even though they don't believe it, that they uh, want you to vote uh, to get the votes in. Because, you know, that was the problem I had with Trump and everybody else. Stop the counting. What do you mean stop the counting? Every valid vote should be counted, uh, regardless of whom it goes to. So that's the bigger issue. And how do we get reform? What's the bigger issue? This isn't going to be the first. This is going to go on probably forever with covers. Uh, it's going to be one thing after another. So what is the problem here? We don't have proper antivirals. People should be able to get this, take two or three days off of work, take some medications, and you're fine and move on. We don't have that with anything. The regular flu doesn't have this either. There's virtually no cures for anything. And there are a few medications that maybe help in some survival areas. Uh, and that's it. So we have a total failure of the medical industry and nobody wants to talk about it. That's the bigger picture here. What they want to talk about is, again, get you involved in the minutia, get you moved into complicated areas that mean this vaccination means nothing because this will, uh, uh, this is only going to be good probably for six months because these things are constantly changing. This can't be any good. 
This, that's what all vaccinations are. They're never any good. And they had problems coming up with a vaccination for SARS in the past, which this is part of it. It's constantly mutating. So it does, none of this makes sense. So um, they're getting you caught in the minutia. Why don't we have antivirals? Why aren't we working on things that can go after stuff like this and take care of it? Well, that's the bigger question. And that goes with everything. What is the bigger problem here? So uh, it's not uh, trying. People look at an issue and then they take a bit of that issue out instead of looking at the bigger picture. Oh, we have this problem. We don't have a problem with covert. We have a problem with the medical industry. It's going to be covert today. It's going to be cockaboo tomorrow. And it's going to go on and on. And the graveyards fill up not only with people that are dead from things like this quickly, but the graveyards are piling up with people because they have horrible uh, problems with all diseases, diabetes, kidneys, and livers, because these are your filters are having horrible problems today. So if you're not cleansing your kidneys and liver out, you're in trouble. So it's not this, which again, you're looking at this when your kidney and liver are all in trouble right now, your blood sugar's up through the roof. Well, maybe you'll survive this and you can just wait until you die 10, 20 years early from something else, or maybe even die in a few years because you have liver failure or kidney failure. It goes on and on with these things uh, because of the fact that the toxins in our foods and all the things that we're eating. What do we do about that? That's the bigger picture. And you need to look at that, particularly as a manifesting occult scientist. Uh, what are you doing working on those things? You need to know. So it's not about, well, I need the rate to take care of covert. You need the rate to take care of your body in general to heal your blood sugar, your kidneys, your liver. All of this is stuff that you need to be working on. That's the bigger picture. So getting caught in this, well, you need to know what's going on in society. We need to know what's going on. We're living in 1984 plus 50. Everything is corrupt. There's a huge international criminal element that controls everybody everywhere. Um, they have instantaneous communication, as I've recently went over attack. Well, they have things that they communicate instantaneously, and they will track you wherever you go and harass you and so forth if they choose to. That's all part of their criminal system, which everybody's involved with. So this is a bigger picture, and this is part of the anti-corruption that has to be out there. If we had no corruption right now, we wouldn't have any of these problems. We would have the proper voting online. We would have medical cures for everything. What does it come down to? What's the bigger, bigger, bigger picture? Well, it's all about corruption. The medical industry is all screwed up because it's corrupt. The, uh, and the voting is all screw, screwed up because it's corrupt. If those things were changed and people had a proper voice and um, if there wasn't corruption in the drug industry, the medical industry, the voting, you name it, the military, all the police departments, everybody, including all your fire, everybody is all corrupt and nothing ever works there and it gets worse and worse. So uh, how do you stop all that? The bigger, bigger, bigger picture is stop corruption, which I've been saying for years. And as usual, I'm right. I was right about these illnesses coming. I was right about everything else that's going on. And these are that. So don't get caught up in the minutia. Well, you have to deal with some of that every day. Can you go to work, not go to work? Well, you don't have much control over that. Uh, but the bigger picture is if something is going on, uh, you should have the technologies to counter it. And you should be working in your own little way to support bigger picture solutions, which never happen because of corruption. So where does that leave you again? Well, uh, as we've always tried to do is you empower yourself as much as you possibly can in the physical world uh, with different technologies and so forth, giving yourself that edge so you can push yourself ahead. And you do what you can to support anti-corruption as uh, you can in all these levels. Uh, but it could be uh, your survival to know the truth. Is this vaccination even safe? Well, if you get this injected in your system, um, you are in big trouble. So, uh, possibly. We don't know right now. 
So you have to judge that. How do you know? Well, there's ways of psychically reading that using pendulums. Is this good for you? Uh, getting pictures of the actual vaccines and uh, tapping into the subtle energies that are there. Uh, is this good? Is this good for you in particular and each and every one of your family? Um, should this be something you get in general based on the information? These are all the things you need to know. Um, and these are, quote, kind of political to a certain degree. But, you know, all of this affects us whether we like it or not. So while we don't want to get involved in the minutia, we want to look at the bigger picture. Uh, we are part of this world whether we like it or not. And uh, there's no way to isolate yourself uh, from this world because you're very interdependent. Uh, it would take a large group of people with a lot of money to be uh, pretty independent. And I've tried to do this for years. It never happens. So, um, all of it comes down to being educated, staying on the path of gnosis, find what the truth is, that is what's going to answer your questions, and ultimately will be involved in your empowerment and even your survival. Until next time.